I've had these conversations with my parents, you know, so that I could be alive. Yeah. Uh, but maybe in that same vein, the, com the conversations need, need to also shift towards, this is what you do so you don't kill anyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, absolutely. This is what you need, 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 need to do so you don't get anybody fired. Right. Right. So that you don't call the cops when someone's barbecuing in right. Oakland. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a very intentional and serious right. conversation, yeah. right? All right, so last night we aired our one hour special on race and parenting, and it was a continuation of a series that we started in May where we talked to parents from different backgrounds on how they talk to their kids about race, racism, and identity. And here's another clip from last night's special. I think we also have to understand and take responsibility for the fact that if we have all white friend groups, we need to talk about that with our children, mm -hmm. right? For those of us who are white. And what does that mean and what does that look like? Mm -hmm. um, if we have our children in schools that are that are predominantly white, if, if all of their um, their caregivers, if their doctors and their dentists and everyone that they see in positions of authority are all white, that is a conscious choice, right? We need to make sure that we're making these choices that seem like they're not racialized, that we're, we are making these racialized choices and these decisions. Those of us who are parents of color understand them to be racialized choices when we're choosing our caregivers for our children, mm -hmm. right? And White parents need to understand that if you're really choosing a doctor, it's not just a random, oh, I'm just choosing this doctor. If you're choosing just the first white doctor that you're seeing, that's a racialized choice. I mean, if you're a white family and you only hang out with white people, there's a, probably a good chance that you're not doing much to push the needle toward racial justice if you're exclusively always in, in, in white spaces. And so that's right. something for white families to cross-examine. Like, what am I doing to, like, if I have the privilege not to experience racism, what am I doing to put myself in the line of fire so I actually have negative race-based experiences, which will often come from white people, that's often the backlash that will come. Probably the people who said, why are we talking about race? Right. We're probably disproportionately white. Probably oh, not yeah. all, but disproportionately mm -hmm. white. And so white families need to be asking, like, what am I doing to push it? And if I'm not, if I'm not getting any backlash, there's probably a good chance I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And we are joined now by Alma Alonzo, who's part of the, one of the Seattle uh, Public Schools race and equity teams. One of the things on our series that we listed were some resources for families who were interested in these conversations on race and parenting and how they could get involved. And one of the things was the Seattle Public Schools race and equity team, which you are a part of. I am. But first, <laughs> explain to us what exactly is a race and equity team. Well, a race and equity team is a group of people um, that want to help lead equity initiatives within our public schools. And it could mean um, a combination of teachers or parents and even community members. So in terms of you know how parents can get involved, that's one way they can get involved. They can ask about uh, whether or not their school has a race and equity team and see if they can become part of it. Is there a motto or a charge that the race and equity teams are given? Are they supposed to advocate for the students? Are they supposed right. to, you know, come up with activities for the school? What are they doing? Are they listening to complaints? Mm, it's a little bit different in every school. So you can imagine if there are parents on the team, mm -hmm. um, they might steer the activities to more family oriented. Uh, topics or activities. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm on a equity team that has mostly teachers mm -hmm. and so our focus right now or in this this past year has been to increase professional development for our colleagues. Mm -hmm. Moving forward we're adding on a parent rep representative as well so that might change coming in the in the next year. I know of other schools mm -hmm. that have um, parents on them and also their um, family support workers and they have student equity teams as uh -huh. well so and they have and in the high schools you can have students on these equity teams mm -hmm. so the nature of the participation and the nature of the activities that the equity teams lead mm -hmm. will vary from school to school I see and so if I'm new to this and I don't know anything about race and equity is it about undoing racism is it about pushing social justice what kind of topics are discussed. Yeah, all of that really. Um, and the focus is really on racial equity. I mean, we can shift our equity lenses in different ways, but the reality in our country is that we have a specific kind of system that disproportionately benefits one group versus the other group. And so we don't want to lose that racial lens altogether, even though. 
our equity work can intersect with other ways that people are marginalized, mm -hmm. it's very important to keep that focus on racial equity. Mm -hmm. right. What about parents? How can they kind of follow up with what's going on with their teams at their schools? Mm -hmm. Just like that. I mean, just coming forward and asking, first of all, whether or not there is one. Okay. Um, because not all schools have a race, right. racial equity team. And if there is, approach the, the administrator and there's usually a building team leader that they can approach as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I love it. How long have they been around in general? Well, unofficially, they've been around forever. Okay. I mean, there's okay. always been people yeah. who are passionate about moving the cause for social equity um, and racial equity mm -hmm. and other, you know, social justice movements mm -hmm. in every sphere of life, including education. So unofficially, for as long as we've had oppression, we have mm -hmm. teens, right? <laughs> right? Um, and then, but within the Seattle Public Schools, uh, about five years ago, I want to okay. say, uh -huh. the, the district made a commitment to actually um, putting some money behind, of the, okay. behind this effort. Yeah. So um, we, we're, I think we're in our fifth cohort now of these officially recognized yeah. teams that have funding that recognizes that this is work that's above and beyond what the typical teacher or typical educator or um, stakeholder within the Seattle Public School mm -hmm. community uh -huh. um, does. Right. So it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much mm -hmm. for joining us. And if you do want to jump in on the conversation, you can text TALK to the number on your screen. I think that's 206-448-4545. And we'll toss it back over to you.